Chapek is a brand that has been on the rise in recent years. It has really broken onto the scene of high-end sports watches with their popular Antarctic line, showing off many capabilities that speak to the modern collector. As such, Chapek is one of the up-and-coming brands that you should keep an eye on. And today I'm very excited to present to you their new 2020 release, the Chapek Antarctic Revelation or Revelation. This is a very hot new contender in the skeletonized high-end sports watch category. But not only did I have my hands on one of the five prototypes of this skeletonized Antarctic, at the end of the video I will also show you some of their new dials, some of which I haven't even seen at Watches and Wonders. And do stick around because these dials are very special. But first off, let's start with the main topic of this video, which is the Antarctic Revelation before we then compared to similar contenders in a similar price range. The caliber we see in this watch is a heavily modified version of the SXH5. And the main thing that sets this skeletonized watch apart is definitely the movement architecture. This is not the finishing or the shape of individual parts, but rather the entire composition and design of the movement. This caliber has real depth and stylized features to it. From the dial side you have these strong bridges holding on to the main three movement components that are visible from the front, the barrel, the rotor and the balance. You have a nice movement of shrinking circles counterclockwise from the barrel over to the sub-seconds. And I really want to point out here the three-dimensionality that you have in this movement. Movement architecture is something really important because it gives the movement interest to look into. You can look into diagonally, you really see the main, almost architectural features of the movement. Outstanding examples in the industry are of course Grubel Forcy, Laurent Ferrier and Romain Gauthier to mention a few. If some others pop in mind, then leave them down in the comments below. To show you more what I mean, let's compare it to the Parmigiani Fleurier Tonda Skeleton, which is a beautiful skeletonized watch, but you immediately see the differences. On the Parmigiani, they only evacuated the main plate, which looks very nice, especially with these organic flowing lines and the finishing, of course. But when you compare it to the Xapec, the Xapec has just much more nuance to it. There is sheer sides, you can look into the movement diagonally and you will see different parts of the movement. You have this tripod structure holding on to the handset. And the bridges are not merely, let's say, cut out of a plate, but they are really three-dimensionally formed. There's really an architecture to this. The most obvious changes, other than of course the skeletonization, is the removal of the central seconds hand and replacing it by a sub-seconds counter. What we also have is a sturdier looking balance bridge. And I love the micro rotor, how it looks like it's really just hanging in mid-air with just the small gears transferring its power to the mainspring. As with the regular Antarctic, I think Chapek yet again really nailed this contemporary look with traditional features. We have a very modern look with the blackened bridges, yet we have these classical finishes of frosting, anglage, beveling and so on. We have a very modern looking dial side, as it does away with all the conventional, traditional Swiss designing features. But on the other hand, we have very traditional aspects, for example, the finger bridges for the train of wheels. All in all, I think this produces a movement look that you simply cannot find with any other comparable Swiss watch brand. And on top of that, the architectural design that they put into the dial side of the skeletonized Antarctic really sets this one apart from any other contenders in the industry, especially at this price point. But if you know another brand that has similar features, then definitely let me know in the comments below. We always love to discuss down there. What I also want to mention here is that I applaud Xapex's transparency by which they clearly state which manufacturers, which designers were involved in what part of the process. Other high horology Swiss watch brands seem to be ashamed of their outspoken affiliation to other designers and manufacturers, even though basically every watch brand uses outsourcing in their manufacturing. And I think transparency is a great thing especially in the Swiss watch industry, which was actually traditionally built to be 
kind of a collaboration of different specialized manufacturers creating beautiful timepieces. What also really impressed me with the revelation is the sportiness of this watch. If you see a completely skeletonized or open work watch like this, you wouldn't necessarily make it out to be sturdy. But with this one, we have 120 meters water resistance. We have a full balance bridge, screw down crown with crown shoulders, an impressive 60 hour power reserve, a comfortable size of 40.5 millimeters and all of this in a slender case of 10.5 millimeters. And it is exceptionally well loomed and the indices are dagger styled and really pointing to the center of the dial. But let's compare it to some of its competitors, which also offer integrated bracelet sports watches with skeletonized or open work dials. By the way, a big thank you to Seilenacht Juweliere in Freiburg. If you have any questions or inquiries about Chapek watches, then please let them know. I will leave all their details down in the description. Let's start with the most expensive one and also the original design icon of this integrated style. The Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Double Balancier Open World. I've always been a fan of this watch and I think even though it doesn't have this really architectural aspect to it, I think the combination of the colors and contrast with the, the golds and the pinks and the blacks and the polished edges really make this, I would say, the most beautiful one of them all. And it is also the most technically advanced with the double balance wheel. The way this works is if one hairspring is in an orientation where it, let's say, loses time, the other one is in the exact opposite orientation, so it will gain time, so that both actually cancel each other out. But this is a 73,000 euro watch, so clearly the most expensive one of all of these. It is 41 millimeter, under 10 millimeters thin, but only has 50 meter water resistance and 45 hours of power reserve. It is also fully loomed, even though there's just a little bit of it, and you have center seconds and a full automatic rotor. The second most expensive one on the list is the Parmigiani Fleurier Tonda PF Skeleton. This one is also less open worked, so if you prefer that, this would be the way to go, but in that way also less inspired in the design. But with 60,000 euros, quite an expensive choice in this category. No loom here, no second hand, and just like the AP Royal Oak and the Girard Perigo Laureato, we have a full size precious metal rotor. But we have nice proportions with 40 millimeters and only 8.5 millimeters of thickness, as well as an impressive 100 meter water resistance and 60 hour power zone. Speaking of the Girard Perigo Laureato, we have also quite interesting and flowing bridge designs and skeletonizations. And also here, as in the AP and the Parmigiani, you have different case materials and colors to choose from. It is 45,000 euros, 42 millimeters in diameter and 10.7 millimeters thick. It has 100 meter water resistance and 55 hours of power reserve. It is fully loomed and it also has a second hand, is kind of a weirdly placed and tiny sub second style, which is almost unusable. And last but not least, we have the Bulgari Octo Finissimo 8 Day, which is the cheapest one of them, but also in terms of skeletonization and design, the poorest execution. But of course, this has an 8 Day hand wound caliber, a very cool Octo Finissimo case and bracelet design, and of course, the incredible thinness of just 6 millimeters, and this in a 40 millimeter titanium case. Among this competition, I believe the Xapec Antarctic Revelation to be the best choice of them all. 38,000 euros is right in the middle of all of these contenders, but none of them offer the architecture and the depth of the design and this skeletonization. The micro rotor setup, as well as the very sporty construction and sporty sensibility, make this the most interesting choice in all of integrated bracelet skeletonized sports watches. If you enjoyed this video or if you stuck around until this point, then please leave a like, consider subscribing, we have a lot more content like this, and I hope to see you in the next one. Ciao.